So here's our setup and I've added to this drawing my coordinate system. Note that the direction of motion is in the x direction and they tell us in the problem that up is positive x. So that's the positive x direction there. And perpendicular to x of course is y. And I've added the forces. Uh, we have the weight of block A pointing vertically downward. We have the weight of block B also vertically downward. And the normal force from the surface is going to be on the y-axis, pointing up perpendicular to the surface. Because this is a frictionless, massless pulley, this weight of B is transferred through the tension in the string to the x direction, pulling on block A. So I've labeled that right here with the weight of B. I have not included the frictional force yet because we don't know actually at, at this stage which way it is directed. So I haven't added it yet. But I have gone ahead and resolved any force that's not on the x or y axis. So in that case, in this case, that's only the weight of block A. So it has a y component and an x component. So I don't encourage you usually to draw the whole diagram like this. Usually, of course, what we do is we use a dot that represents the center of mass of block A. And now we show all the forces acting on block A originating at its center of mass. So the tension in the string from the weight of B is here and it's 32 Newtons. My normal force is in the positive Y direction. My Y component of the weight of block A is in the negative Y direction. And the X component of the weight of block A is in the negative X direction. And how did I get this number here, 65.5? Well, it was given to me that the weight of A was 102 Newtons. And so this angle is given to be 40 degrees. A little geometry shows that that same angle appears between the vertical and the y-axis. So 102 sine 40 is 65 and a half Newtons for my value of uh, WAX. Now, I don't know which way the friction is acting, so I have to look at the forces in the x direction. Here they are, the weight of B and the x component of A. And I have to ask myself, in a tug of war, so to speak, between those two forces, which way does the block want to move? Well, we see that the x component of A is bigger than the weight of B, so that means the block wants to slide down the ramp. So friction is going to oppose that, of course. So that means my frictional force then is going to be up the ramp. So I'll go ahead and add that right here up the ramp. Now, what does the block do? Now that I have all the forces figured out, what is the block going to do? Well, I need to know, is this force here, 65 and a half Newtons, larger than these two forces here. Because if it is, then I know the block will accelerate down the ramp. But if it's not greater, uh, it will not accelerate down the ramp. And since the static frictional force can be anything between zero and the maximum static frictional force, what likely could happen is that Fs will be some number in between zero and the maximum so that together these two forces together will equal this force here. And in that case, the sum of the forces in the x direction would be zero and the block would remain at rest. It would not accelerate. So let's figure out if, what happens here. Uh, our maximum static frictional force is mu s times the normal force. Uh, 0.56 was given to us as mu s. The normal force is 78. So we see that Fs max is 43.8. So together, 43.8 and 32 is bigger than 65. So this, certainly the frictional force is not gonna cause the block to move up the ramp. So another way of describing the situation here is since the X component of block A's weight is 65 and a half Newtons, we only need 33 and a half Newtons of static friction to hold it in place. We could have up to 43.8 Newtons. So that's what happens. We only have 33 and a half Newtons of static frictional force. So the block remains at rest. 
these forces here are equal to 65 and a half newtons. Okay, in part B, it says that the block has been set into motion up the ramp. So we don't care how that happened. All we care is that now the block is moving up the ramp. So I know right away that there is kinetic frictional force because it's sliding, it's moving, and it will oppose the motion. So if it's moving up the ramp, the kinetic friction, of course, is down the ramp. So here's my modified force diagram. The weight vectors haven't changed, uh, but now my kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force. So the normal force we know is the same as the y component of the weight of a. So mu k is 0.25, so my kinetic frictional force is 19.5 newtons. So now I'm going to look at these forces in the x direction, that's parallel to the ramp, and use Newton's second law. So the sum of the forces, 32 is in the positive direction, 65 and FK or 19.5 are in the negative direction. So you see here positive on 32, negative on the other two. Sum those up and divide by the mass of the system. How did I calculate this right here, the mass of the system? Well, make sure you realize that this mass is the is the total amount of mass that's being accelerated by all of these forces. So that is both blocks. So they give us the weight of the blocks. So the total weight divided by 9.8 is the mass. So when you solve for A, you get negative 3.9. So remember down the ramp is negative. So that's the direction of my acceleration. That's the direction of my net force. And since the block is initially moving up the ramp, we know when acceleration and velocity are in opposite directions, that means the object is slowing down. Now in part C, they say the block has been set into motion down the ramp, so my frictional force is going to be up the ramp. And just like before in part B, the kinetic friction is 19 and a half newtons. Now my sum of the forces in the X direction includes a positive 19.5. Now I have two positive vectors in the positive x direction. And solving for A now gives me negative one. Of course, the negative indicates down the ramp. So since the block is already moving down the ramp and it's accelerating down the ramp, that means it's going to speed up in the downward direction at one meter per second squared.